Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is show you how to use your TI-84 graphing calculator to calculate a confidence interval for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known. So this is the Burger King example that's in the notes on Blackboard uh, for week 10. So let's give this a read. It says the Burger King Corporation claims that the average weight for its pre-cooked burgers is a quarter pound with a population standard deviation of 0.03. Notice how I bolded the words population standard deviation there because that has importance on the distribution that you're going to be using. It says the FDA is skeptical of this claim due to an increase in the number of complaints regarding the weight of the burgers. The FDA goes to a region and takes a random sample of 100 burgers. The average weight for the sample, all right, so that average for the sample, that's a sample mean X bar, is 0.248 pounds which is slightly under the 0.25, you know, the quarter pound mark that Burger King is claiming. All right, so letter A, to set up a confidence interval, what distribution will you be using and why? All right, notice how we are given the population standard deviation. Now, what other kind of standard deviation could you be given? Well, you could be given the standard deviation for the sample. In other words, these hundred hamburgers that they grabbed, they got a mean for those hundred hamburgers, and that's called X bar. But this standard deviation right here, in theory, is for all of the hamburgers that Burger King makes. You know, it's a, it's a population standard deviation. Now, you know, the, the, the probability of having it is very low, obviously. Uh, so some big study must have been done at some point in the, pro, in the past. Um, but if you don't have the population standard deviation, you would have the sample standard deviation. In other words, for those 100 hamburgers. Because if you have 100 weights, you could quickly calculate a mean and standard deviation. So this standard deviation here isn't for those 100 hamburgers. That standard deviation is for all the hamburgers, you know, an estimate of all of them. All right, so if you're given the population standard deviation, the rule is you're going to use the normal distribution in z-scores, plain and simple. If you were given the sample standard deviation, then you'll use the t-distribution, and that's explained in the next topic. All right, so the answer that I put down here, pretty simple. You're going to use the normal distribution in z-scores since you know the population standard deviation. It's a plain, simple answer. All right, so now it says calculate the 95% confidence interval. Now, hopefully you read through this, this big explanation here on how to first calculate the error and then take the error and add it and subtract it to the x-bar to create this interval that surrounds the population mean. You know, really the point of this video is just to show you how to calculate this confidence interval right here, um, you know, on your calculator. It's really fast. The calculator not only crunches the error, but it simultaneously adds and subtracts the error to the x-bar and gives you the answer for the confidence interval. All right, so in your calculator, that's located in the stat menu. So if you push stat and move over to tests, now we're going to see a lot of these tests. The first um, six options, those are all hypothesis tests which I believe is in, it begins in chapter 10. It starts in chapter 10. I think we do 10, 11, 12, and 13 maybe. That's where the course ends pretty much. Uh, but these are hypothesis tests, so we're not there yet. Number seven, notice it says interval. So if I scroll down a little ways here, notice after the tests, it has all these in, words interval or int, obviously because it can't fit it. It needs interval as well. And notice number seven says Z interval. That's, the, that's a confidence interval using z-scores. This other option here, number eight, is a confidence interval using t-scores. It's using the t-distribution. All right, so we're actually going to be using uh, the normal distribution. That's this methodology here. In other words, where this, this is a critical z-score in the error formula times sigma over radical n. You know, that critical z-score, remember, comes from that z-score table, which is above. So if we go up here, put a copy of this. I believe I put a copy of this table in... Uh, Blackboard as well. Uh, I think I just called it a uh, critical z-score table or something like that. All right, so if I go back here. You know, the confidence interval is done for us. You know, we already, I already calculated it for you by hand. This is, you know, the hand method for doing it. So if you choose option seven here, it's pretty straightforward info, uh, piece of information. You have to give the, um, it, it asks you, you know, what do you give me? It says input data or stats. Well, we don't have the raw data. In other words, we don't have the weights of the 100 hamburgers. You know, we have the summarized statistics. So I'm, uh, I'm going to scroll this thing over, use my arrows, and you got to hit enter, and notice how the inputs change. So now it just prompts you and says, you know, what do you got for me? And you just put the stuff in. So sigma was 0.03. That's the population standard deviation. 
Uh, the X bar was 0.248. The number of hamburgers was 100. And this question here says set up a 95% confidence interval. So notice C level is already set to 0.95. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and calculate. And what it's going to do is all this work right here for me, which is kind of remarkable when you think about it. So if I hit enter, 0.24212. 0 0.24212, 0 0.25388, 0 0.25388, and then of course at this point you could round to whatever decimal place uh, that you need to. Typically, um, you would look at your statistics, typically, and whatever statistic has the most place values, which I believe is right here, this um, sample mean, 0 0.248, notice how it has three decimals, so typically you would round your um, answer for your confidence interval to three decimal places because of that. And that's what I did down here. All right, so notice, when you use the calculator to find the confidence interval, it just gives you the confidence interval. It does not give you the error, right? So the error, you would have to either use the error formula to crunch it, or if you think about it, the calculator, when it gives you this confidence interval right here, you know, the mean was in the middle, that sample mean. In other words, that 0.248, this number right here, that 0.248 is in the middle of this confidence interval. So the error was added to the 2.48 to create that 25388 number, and the error was subtracted from the 0.248 to create this 0.24212 number. So in other words, the distance between these two numbers, the lower limit for the confidence interval and the upper limit for the confidence interval, is actually double the error. So if you take these numbers, 0 0.25388, subtract off 0 0.24212 and divide that in half, notice you get 0 0.00588, which is the error. So actually, even though when you use the calculator, it doesn't give you the error directly, you can still find the error by subtracting the limits of the confidence interval and cutting it in half. All right, and this final question here. Um, oh, you know what? This question did not ask. It did not ask you to interpret this. I think we should probably say what this means. So um, I, I put it down here. Yeah, here we go. This is like a textbook definition. We are ninety-five percent confident that the population mean hamburger weight lies between and those two numbers. Okay. Really, how we should think of it is, um, if you if if you start grabbing samples of a hundred hamburgers in calculating the confidence interval, 95% of those confidence intervals will have uh, the real population mean inside of it. It's probably a better interpretation. There's so many ways to interpret this thing. Uh, the part C to this just asks if, you know, Burger King's claim, you know, because remember Burger King said, hey, am I, you know, our quarter pound is where a quarter pound. They want, and wants to know, does, does their claim seem reasonable? And then explain. Well, you know, if you just got a 95% confidence interval, you know, uh, to be this number, and Burger King says it's a quarter pound. Notice a quarter pound lands inside the confidence interval. So, you know, how do you argue with these guys in that case? If they're claiming it's a quarter pound and you just calculated a 95% confidence interval, and, you know, this is like, you know, a, a feeling of good faith as to where the population mean lies, then obviously the fact that Burger King's number lands in there, you know, how do you fight them? Uh, their claim definitely seems reasonable because their number lands inside the confidence interval. Obviously, if their number landed outside of the confidence interval, then you would say, no, their number does not look reasonable. All right, so, you know, really the point of this, um, this video is just to show you how to use the calculator to crunch this confidence interval and to get the error out of it. It's a pretty easy um, concept. You go to Stat, move over to Tests, choose Option 7 for Z interval, and that's how you estimate the confidence interval the population mean, you know, with a confidence interval um, using z-scores. All right, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Thanks.